I, th I think that human rights are important because we're all human beings. Uh, and all you have to do is just for one moment, imagine yourself in a situation where your human rights were at risk and see how you would want to be treated. That's, that's the acid test. When people say human rights matter, and I think most Australians do think human rights matter, do they really mean my human rights matter? And the human rights of my family and friends and neighbours matter? That's very dangerous thinking. Any, any community which allows itself to think that way will face terrible trouble in the future. The logic of it, I think, was captured brilliantly by Martin Niemöller, um, who was a, a German Lutheran pastor uh, just before the Second World War, and he famously said, when they came for the socialists, I said nothing, because I'm not a socialist. And when they came for the trade unionists, I said nothing, because I'm not a trade unionist. When they came for the Jews, I said nothing, because I'm not a Jew. And when they came for me, there was no one to speak for me. That's what we have to remember. We have to remember that it's any government that is prepared to brutalise any group of innocent human beings will look round for another group. All they have to do is make sure that other group is unpopular enough that most people will stay silent when their human rights are being trashed. My background as a lawyer is that I've always been a commercial barrister. And in 2001, by chance, I was asked if I would appear pro bono for the people who'd been rescued by the Tampa. I went into that case knowing nothing about refugee law or policy. And by virtue of doing it, I learned a whole lot about what we were doing, and I was pretty uncomfortable with that. But then there's an interesting thing that happened, because uh, Justice North delivered his judgment in the case at 2.15 in the afternoon, Melbourne time, on the 11th of September 2001, just about eight or nine hours before the attack on America. And once that happened, all of a sudden, all um, Muslims were terrorists, as far as the public is concerned, and boat people are suddenly illegal, creating this sense in the public mind that they're criminals. The exercise of pushing them away has been called border protection, and so the public who have no reason to look behind the news that they read, they think that we're being protected from criminals, which would be reasonable if it was true, but it's a lie. I mean, when the Tampa happened, there was a real question mark over whether John Howard would be re-elected. But the election uh, had to be held in November of 2001, and he came storming home with a big majority. And of course, his tag for the 2001 election was, we will decide who comes to the country and the circumstance in which they come. Mm. Which, <clears throat> if he was talking about migration policy, was perfectly accurate and reasonable. Uh, if he's talking about refugee policy, which he was, it was completely wrong, absolutely false. But he picked up on the, on the alarm that was created across the West by the attack on America, uh, so that anything that made it look as though you were going to be a bit safer from being attacked by Muslim terrorists was a good idea. Hmm. And I think that's how the dynamics have played out. Now, it won them a lot of votes in 2001. They've continued to use the illegals tag for boat people, even though it is a lie, because boat people do not commit any offence by coming to Australia without an invitation and asking for protection from persecution. And when you see the footage of people in places like Aleppo, you think, my God, what would I do if I was in that situation? And I think most of us, and I'm pretty confident that most of our politicians, if they were in a situation like that, they would run to wherever they could get to. And if they had to use uh, people smugglers to get somewhere safe, they would do it. Uh, and if they, you know, let any of them go public and say that they wouldn't do it. There's an interesting way of analysing it. I'm entitled to say, I will decide who comes to my home and the circumstance in which they come. Um, and if, if I'm tired of having people calling in, I could say I will not have anyone coming to my home until Thursday week. That would be a bit unfriendly, but it would be reasonable. Um, but what happens if I say that and the next morning a little kid runs up to the door saying, help me, there's a man with a big knife chasing me. I could say come back on Thursday week, but that would be unthinkably terrible. 
uh, what you do is you bring her in, you sit her down, check her story, and if she's telling the truth, protect her, and if she's not telling the truth, send her home. Now, that's refugee policy in a nutshell. Australia's largest arrival rate of boat people ever was just short of 25,000 in 2012, 2013. At any one time in Australia, there's about, or right now, there's about 64,000 people who've come here on valid visas and have simply stayed on after the visas have expired. 64,000 is only slightly fewer than the number of boat people who've come to Australia since 1976. Now, we really, do we really think we can't cope with that? It's crazy. And as the politicians never tire of reminding, it's a very dangerous journey, so I don't think the numbers are ever going to be very big. We do not need to brutalise people the way we've been doing at vast expense and at great cost to our domestic reputation for, as a decent nation. Now, why do we treat them all so badly? It's because the government has persuaded us, and this is the coalition politicians, have persuaded us that these people who come without prior permission are illegal. Well, they're not. I would really, really challenge any politician in Australia to stand up and say, refugees, boat people are human beings, they need help and we will help them. Instead, what do they do? They say, oh, well, they're illegals and we must stop them from coming because we're worried about them drowning. That is absolute bullshit. They do not believe it and they're lying when they say it because what do they do to the people who don't drown? They punish them. Now, if you're worried about people drowning, you don't punish the ones who don't drown. We know most Australians are aware that the people who are being taken and now held up, forced offshore, prevented from applying for asylum in Australia, we know that they're human beings. We've got a general idea of the sort of things they're escaping. And yet, we don't seem to think it's important that their human right to existence is respected. I think that in <clears throat> maybe 20 years, there'll be a Royal Commission into all of this and Australians will look and say, how on earth did we ever go along with that? Why did we let that happen? We're decent people. How could we mistreat human beings this way? How do we let ourselves be conned into thinking these people were criminals when we know they're not? I don't know if we're ever going to be able to explain to ourselves why this was acceptable, because frankly, it's not. If we regard ourselves as decent people, and I do regard Australia as a decent nation, um, then I just, you can't explain how we've let ourselves be tricked into behaving so badly. I remember Tony Abbott once saying that uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan, obviously quite important in Christian teaching, he actually said that if the Samaritan had come across more than one person, the story might have been written differently. Now, it's a rare thing to have an Australian Prime Minister who can, who can reconfigure a biblical story in order to justify his own conduct.